All right, well, hello and good evening to uh, all the folks out there on the World Wide Web of the Intertube. My name is Zach Robinson. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about pump laws. So, quick little background on myself so that way we can become friends. Uh, I am a 20-year veteran of the nuclear industry, both military and civilian applications. I originally started out in music composition. And now I run the group that teaches people how to operate nuclear reactors. So you guys can see the logical progression there and how that works. So, as I said, we're going to talk about pump laws. Here's how we're going to do this. We're going to go through the who, what, why, and how of pump laws. Then we're going to work through an example problem. We'll do a brief review, and then I'll stop talking. You guys will be much better for it. So, without further ado, let's talk about my favorite. Why? Why would I care about how to work a pump law? Don't even know what it means yet. So here's the idea. The ability to be able to predict a system's response based on the change in one parameter gives us a better indication of how that system overall will respond to any changes in initial conditions. It's about understanding the changes we make and what the, if you'll pardon the phrase, downstream, get it? Because it's a pump and there's water. Never mind. So, that makes it a little bit more important for us to understand when I change this, what's going to happen to the rest of my system. So, that takes care of the why. Here's how not to embarrass yourself. Who? I use the phrase pump laws. However, this specifically applies to centrifugal pumps it does not apply to any other type of pump. Please do not try to work this on a positive displacement pump. I'm not even sure how you would do that, but just don't. Um, it's not going to end well. Uh, so remember, for the WHO, all that is really talking about is centrifugal pumps and fans. But this is pump laws, so we're going to leave the fans out of it. So, WHO, centrifugal pumps. All right, so we've gone over the why, we covered the who, next up, what. So I'm going to put something on the board here that's going to be pretty critical to our explanation. I'm going to say that volumetric flow rate is proportional to pump speed. I'm also going to say that pump head is proportional to pump speed squared. And finally, I'll say that pump power is proportional to, wait for it, you guessed, speed cubed. So, what we have in front of us is a relationship that allows us to predict, that was the Y, changes in parameters for a centrifugal pump only, and fans, based on speed. So, volumetric flow rate is proportional to speed, Pump head is proportional to speed squared, and power is proportional to speed cubed. Now I'm going to make one minor adjustment to this. You know, look, it's speed. So really, kind of like speed to the first power. Go with it, because if you look at this, you'll never forget it. V H very hard problems are as easy as one, two, three. Don't say I never gave you anything. You should never be able to uh, not call that up. Very hard problems are as easy as one, two, three. Great. That takes care of the what. We've expressed a change in one parameter and how it impacts three additional parameters. So let's put that into practice. So now that we've established that very hard problems are as easy as one, two, three, now we can actually put it into a relationship that looks at an initial value and a final value. So what I put on the board here shows the same basic relationship expressed in initial versus final terms. So final volumetric flow rate divided by initial volumetric flow rate is equal to final speed divided by initial speed. 
I've done the same thing for pump head, but we remember that it's speed squared in this case. And then I've done the same for pump power, which again, we remember, is a cubic relationship. So one of the things that always annoyed me in a lot of uh, math texts is somebody would say, well, you know, uh, we started out with this and then after a little algebra, we come up with, and then it doesn't even look like it came from the same original problem. So I'm gonna do the first one kind of longhand and then we'll kind of simplify it. So if I want to find out based on a change in speed, what happened to volumetric flow rate? In other words, I want to find my final volumetric flow rate. I'll need to rearrange. So I'm gonna multiply by initial. These will cancel. That means I have to multiply on the opposite side here. So once I have this set up, the final equation to figure out what my final volumetric flow rate is looks like this. Final volumetric flow rate is equal to final speed over initial speed times whatever the initial volumetric flow rate was. And so that none of my uh, professors from school actually see this and get on me, let me um, actually put the correct markings on volumetric flow rate. They, they get kind of edgy about that stuff. So that's going to be the equation that we're left with for final volumetric flow rate. So talk amongst yourselves, stare awkwardly at each other, and I'm going to set up the remaining relationships. I'm going to say that pump head final is equal to final speed divided by initial speed squared times initial pump head and then for power final power is equal to final speed divided by initial speed cubed times initial power we now have all the information we need, except for the actual values, to work out our predictor case that we said was the whole why of this topic anyway. So, in that case, without further ado, we'll move on to an actual example problem. So as promised, a real world-ish example. Let's say my pump has the following characteristics. It operates at 1,000 RPM. It discharges 200 gallons per minute at a discharge pressure of 10 PSI. To do this, it requires 50 kilowatts of power. Now, say I change the speed to 2,000 RPM. What will be the impact on volumetric flow rate, pump head, and pump power? Well, all we need to do is start substituting in our values. So let's look at volumetric flow rate. I want to find what my new volumetric flow rate is. So I'll need to substitute in my final speed, which is 2,000 RPM, divided by my initial speed, which is 1,000 RPM, and I'll multiply it by my initial volumetric flow rate, which was 200 gallons per minute. So, let's see if we can do this math kind of in our head. 2,000 RPM divided by 1,000 RPM, well, that'll be two, Units cancel, RPM and RPM, gone. So two times 200 GPM, once again, I'll bet we can do this in our head, we come up with a final volumetric flow rate of 400 gallons per minute. So far, so good. But let's get uh, even more complicated. So let's move on to pump head. Now remember, this was a little different. This was a squared relationship. 
So we'll go to substitute our values in, just as we did with volumetric flow rate, but this time we'll be looking for final pump head, which will be equal to my final speed divided by my initial speed squared times my initial pump head. So, substituting in, we'll say 2,000 RPM divided by 1,000 RPM times my initial discharge pressure of 10 PSI. Once again, doing the math probably in our head, 2,000 divided by 1,000 gives me a value of 2, once again. RPM cancels out. 2 squared is going to be 4. Multiplied by 10 PSI will give me a final pump head of 40 PSI. The last value we need to figure out is what is my final power draw. We'll do this the same way we've done for the other two parameters, and I'll say that my power final will equal my final speed divided by my initial speed cubed, I'm going to go ahead and substitute those in, 2,000 RPM divided by 1,000 RPM. This is going to be cubed times my initial pump power draw, which was 50 kilowatts. So what we'll find then is, once again, 2,000 divided by 1,000 will be 2. RPM will cancel out. 2 cubed is going to be 8. So 8 times 50 kilowatts will give me a final value of 400 kilowatts. Now, did anybody catch the quick method of doing this? The quick way. I was very nice in this instance. I made speed change in this problem by a factor of two. It doubled. So, you could have done this the really quick way and said, well, you know, speed change by a factor of two. Very hard problems are as easy as one, two, three. So I'll bet you my final volumetric flow rate would just be two to the first power times whatever the initial value was. Well, let me see if that works. Two times the initial value of um, 200 GPM, that would give me 400 GPM. And sure enough, that's what we came up with when we worked out the full equation. Well, very hard problems are as easy as one, two, three, so pump head will be equal to two squared times the initial value. So two squared becomes, well, four, and then four times my initial 10 PSI discharge comes up to be 40 PSI, which sure enough checks with what we came up with by equations. And then finally, power proportional to speed cubed. So two cubed would be eight times my initial value of 50 kilowatts. My new value is now 400 kilowatts, which came up to exactly the same value as we found by equation. But be careful here. It only works this way in the shorthand version because I doubled the speed. So, if you're ever in doubt, work the entire equation. So, finally, in review, what did we talk about today? We talked about who? Centrifugal pumps and fans. But centrifugal pumps, when you're talking about pumps for pump walls. We talked about the what. The what was the relationship between a change in speed and the impact 
on volumetric flow rate, pump head, and pump power. We talked about the how. We set up our equations. We remembered that VHP 1, 2, 3, very hard problems are as easy as 1, 2, 3. We set up our equations, used our initial information, and then came out with a final outcome. And of course, the why. Why did we bother learning how to do this? Because the ability to predict a change in a system's conditions based on the change in an input parameter is simply good engineering practice. So, that's our topic for today. Once again, my name is Zach Robinson. I enjoyed working with you, and I hope to see you again soon. All right, well, hello and good evening to uh, all the folks out there on the World Wide Web of the Intertube. My name is Zach Robinson.